Welcome to my channel and to my video about this particular homemade antenna for Meshtastic. And as you can see, you'll probably recognize it's a ground plane antenna. I'll tell you a little bit about how I made it and how I managed to optimize it to work really well. And the equipment that I used to do that. One thing which we'll see later on is the um, spectrum analyzer, the tiny SA for using the, to measure the <clears throat> received signal strength. And first of all, I'm going to use this, the Nano VNA. This one's from CEC. And um, we'll use that to measure the SWR. One or two people have asked me about how to set up a Nano VNA. Um, and of course, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube, and I've watched a few of them. But what I did notice is that um, the actual firmware that's in the Nano VNA is quite often quite different depending on the manufacturer and how official it might be and what version number it's on. So quite often the menus are different and, and what you see is different. So um, I'm not going to give a tutorial about how to set this up, just apart from quickly to say, let me reach for my stick <clears throat> because my fingers are too big for this touch screen. Um, just to quickly say that it's a good idea to calibrate the device before you do anything and I'm not going to do it but I'll just show you where it is you um, <clears throat> you have to go and hit the button that says calibrate and different devices have different words in different places so you hit calibrate and then calibrate again and then it's inviting you to connect various things open circuit and this comes with it a standard open circuit so you, you screw it on to the port one the open circuit that's that port there and then you press the button that says open to tell it that the open circuit's there and then it'll invite you to press the short circuit button so you put the short onto that port one press short and then it says load so you put the dummy load onto port one and press the load button and then it asks for isolation that means nothing connected to any port so you leave both ports unconnected and press isolation and then when you're done you hit done and then I save it so you hit save and then save it into one of the pre-saved configs or presets. They've got different names on different devices again. And what I've done here is I've set up a frequency range of 800 megahertz to one gigahertz because that's got the ISM 868 band in it somewhere. And so to do that, you hit stimulus and then start frequency. You type in 868M for megahertz. I'm going to go back and then you put in a stop frequency no it wasn't 868, no it's 800 to 1000 so this will be 1000 M for megahertz and go back <clears throat> press M and then you set up the 800 to 1000 you can see there 800 to 1000 megahertz and I also have one marker switched on and the marker I set to 870 megahertz which is close enough to 868 because it goes in quite big jumps when the span is that wide. And that's the uh, S11 curve or SWR. You set SWR in the menu and then it'll display SWR. I set it with one per division, which means that when this is yellow lines down at the bottom, that's an SWR of 1.0. That would be 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 5 going up one SWR unit per division, which I th think looks okay to use. And that's really about it. I always check that the analyzer's working how I expect by plugging in something that I know, like this antenna, the modified and tuned half-wave vertical from China for £2.90. So uh, that's been tuned by me to be really resonant at 868 MHz. Of course, it won't be when it's laying down like that. <clears throat> we have to stand it up. Sorry, this is going to go sideways now. But now you can see there's a nice dip in the SWR curve and the SWR reading is 1.05 or so at 870 megahertz because I've tuned it. So that's a, a decent antenna that's matched at the frequency we're interested in. And what I'm going to do is connect it to the ground plane antenna and measure that. And this has also been tuned using a pair of wire cutters, which I can't show you. But what I did was I got the rough measurements from a website with a calculator on it. There are several ground plane or different antenna websites that calculate dimensions 
and they all give slightly different results. So I'm not going to say which one's right or wrong. It depends on so many factors. But I'll put the links below to a couple of favorite ones that I use. And um, what I did was I cut the elements longer than they needed to be and connect them to the analyzer. And sure enough, it came out too low in frequency. And then I enjoyed myself by snipping off little bits on the radiating element and watching the frequency of the dip on the SWR move up the frequency scale on the VNA until I got it to where I wanted it, or close, because then these radials were too long. And what I did was I trimmed the radials down a bit to closer to what the theoretical values were. It doesn't really change the center frequency really noticeably at all. It's really this element which is setting the, the resonant frequency of the antenna. And I started out with these horizontal, and I know they're supposed to be bent down at 45 degrees, but what happens when they're horizontal? The answer is that the dip you get doesn't go all the way down to 1, an SWR of 1. It's, it's higher. Maybe it was 1.5 or 1.8. And um, I wanted to experiment because I built antennas like this when I was a teenager in the 1970s. And of course, we didn't have vector network analyzers. There was no way of working, knowing if it worked apart from using a, an SWR bridge and signal reports if you were transmitting. So now with the VNA, you can see what happens. So I started with these being horizontal in a plane, and then I bent them down. And I noticed that as I did this, the SWR improved and got better and better until I reached the optimum value, which is that angle, which probably is 45 degrees. I haven't measured it. If you bend them too far, the SWR comes up again. So um, it proves that you do have to pay attention to this angle. I always wonder about a quarter wave whip on a car roof because the car roof is flat. Normally it's not a pyramid shape, so I don't quite know about that. But let's not worry about that now. Um, so this is the right kind of angle, but it's, it's good to experiment with these things. And all I did was then trim this down a bit more to get it really at 868 megahertz, which it is at the moment, and uh, works nicely. The way I've made it is put it on a piece of plastic drain pipe, and the drain pipe has a, a bung plug that goes in the end for blocking it normally, which is a nice tight fit. And um, all I did was I drilled a hole, put an upside down connector, an SO239, which is uh, not the favoured connector for high frequencies at all, but it's all I had in the drawer. And I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. It's probably a bit lossy. Um, it would be better if this was PTFE in here. The white PTFE is, is better for high frequencies, but this one is a cheap, nasty one with brown plastic. It's not even Bakelite, which it would have been in the old days. It's, it's plastic and it melts if you get it too hot. So you have to watch out. Anyway, soldered it together and it seems to work quite nicely. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is measure the SWR of this. And then I'm going to do some field strength tests like I did in a previous video. So um, what am I going to do is disconnect this antenna from here and see how the SWR curve goes crazy when you put your hand near it. And I'm going to connect it to this antenna. Sorry that uh, this is not easy to hold without switching the analyzer off. So let's put that on there. If you're wearing headphones, I apologize for the clonk. This is a live video and it's not going to get edited because I'm lazy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's resonant at the right frequency. 870 is what I aim for. It's close enough. And the SWR is 1.02-ish. So um, as you can see, I spent a couple of minutes just snipping bits of brass off. This is actually made from brass rod, which I got from Amazon. It's not too expensive. And it's a bit springy and it's a bit thin. Probably should be thicker. It has nasty sharp ends on it, which are very unfriendly I imagine if you get poked by it but there it is and um, as you can see it resonates nicely at 870 megahertz 1.05 now it depends where I stand and what I'm doing I think if you touch this it might move no it doesn't there are so many variables and this is not an anechoic chest uh, test chamber as I said earlier what I'm going to do now is measure the field strength so the way I do that is to use this VNA as a transmitter which is not what it's designed for at all but of course it outputs a signal on this port when and then it's expecting it to come through some device under test back into that port to measure the insertion loss so you can check attenuators and filters and stuff but i'm going to use it just as a simple transmitter and at the moment it's sweeping from 800 to a thousand megahertz which is not what we want so what we have to do and i've cheated is to load a preset but what i actually do i'll show you you go to stimulus and then what I do is I set the start, the start frequency to um, 8, 6, 9 megahertz. And then I set the stop frequency also to uh, 
0.869 megahertz. Let's just go back. Of course, you don't go back, you press M to save it. So you end up with zero span. So what I'm going to do now is I've already saved it. And it's guaranteed to work, I hope. So you do recall, not preset. And then the setting here, 869 to 869. So that's zero span. So it's just sending out a continuous signal on 869 megahertz. I think I did measure it once. It's not much because, of course, I don't want to radiate a signal or carrier on this frequency. I don't want to jam any other signals, but it's very weak. Um, <clears throat> So that's that. So it's zero span at 869. And just to check it's actually working, I'll uh, connect one of these antennas. I'm going to use one of these. This is a LilyGo one, which doesn't work quite as well. This one works better. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so uh, that's a better match. Let's put this short, stubby antenna on port number one. And you see immediately it's measuring the SWR. And it's interesting to note that because the frequency span is zero, the frequency is not changing, but the display is still sweeping across at whatever speed it sweeps at from left to right. What it's actually doing is displaying a curve of SWR against time. So <clears throat> the SWR is constant now at 1.6 because it's laid down on the table. And if, when I put my finger near it, the SWR increases, of course. But if you, you do this, you can pulse the SWR and get a SWR against time graph, which is not something that people normally want to look at. Anyway, that's sending at 869 megahertz, zero span. So I'm going to put this down the antenna test range, which is roughly eight meters long. I've upgraded the shoe now from a, a black one to a white one. And that means that it doesn't come up so high. The last time was a boot, which enclosed the antenna a bit. So hopefully this is more, more like free space. So there's the transmitting antenna. And then we're going to go back to the receiving antenna, being careful not to crash into anything backwards. And <clears throat> how am I going to do this? I'm going to use this spectrum analyzer, the tiny SA, which I'm going to switch on, <laughs> usually helps. And uh, it's not set to do anything much at the moment. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to recall a preset, this device calls it. The software is very same on both of these. I get confused sometimes which one I'm using, or I call it by the wrong name. So the preset I want to use is 868 to 870. So again, you program in the start frequency, the stop frequency, 868, 870, press that. And I've also changed this display to be large numbers as an option, so I can see them better, otherwise it's tiny. And that's showing the level of the marker, which I've set in the center at 869 megahertz, plus 3.4 kilohertz, but you, that's to do with step sizes and stuff, and you can't get rid of it. So it's about 869. So it should be receiving the signal from the transmitter down there, which you can't even see. So now I'm going to connect. What am I going to connect? First of all, I'm going to connect my favorite antenna. This is the one that works by best, the home-tuned, slightly extended half-wave dipole, which gives the best normally received signal. I'm going to have to hold this still. Sorry about this. Put that on there like that. And as you can see, there is a signal being received. What I'm going to do is just move the other antenna in the way a bit. All the other stuff on the table. So there we are receiving a signal. Sorry, it's going to be sideways. So we've got minus 66 dBm. What I'm going to do is put it in the place where I'm going to put the other antenna under test. And I'm going to try to find the maximum signal strength because as I've said a few times, it varies depending on nulls in the radiation pattern. So you can see we've got about minus 60 dBm. Let me just try going higher. This is minus 70. In the same distance from the sending antenna, but different heights, of course, we get different readings because of all the reflections. So this reading is very unscientific. Sorry about this. But relatively, we can see what's happening. So it looks like about minus 60 fairly consistently, minus 60 dBm, minus 59 and a bit. Call it on average, minus 60. I'm sure I got more last time, but maybe I was using a different antenna. If you see those other signals jumping around, those are other users of the ISM band, and sometimes my own node here, which is just about five meters away, will transmit, and that makes a huge signal on the right-hand side of the peak. Anyway, minus 59.4. I'm sure I had more last time. <laughs> 
this is uh, how it is, but it looks like probably minus 60 is the maximum. Oh, well, I saw 58 in there. Always trying to optimize things. Let's call it minus 59 dBm, that's enough. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do now is connect it to this ground plane antenna using the little pigtail cable. There are one or two adapters inside that uh, tube to get it from uh, the SO239 connector to this SMA plug that I'm now putting on the analyzer port number one. So minus 59 dBm or so is about the best I got from the other antenna. I'm trying to make it so this will stand up by itself. Not easy. Doesn't want to. Okay. Now I'm going to move this to find a, a spot with the most signal. It's getting serious. I'm going to have to stand up because this thing is quite heavy with this block of wood. But it's a useful block of wood. So what have we got? <clears throat> Minus 60. So I'm just moving around backwards and forwards, up and down. There's minus 60. There was minus 60 ish. It's more like minus 61, isn't it? So I'm still moving it around. Oh, there goes my node sending a few other things. Minus 61. I saw a 57, but I think that might be some uh, desensitization being caused by, caused by the other strong signal. So minus 59.4, which is roughly the same as the halfway vertical antenna. So um, both of these seem to perform fairly similarly in terms of received signal strength. And they both are tuned antennas, as you saw, with a resonance at 868 or 870 megahertz. So the performance is about the same. This antenna is experimental, which means I can experiment with it. What I'm going to do next in the future is to make a very similar antenna, but make a disc cone, because really I wanted to use this as a receiving antenna just to listen around in that ISM band, because there's quite a lot of interesting signals there and new ones keep coming on every day. There's one which I think is causing problems on our frequency for Meshtastic, because uh, some people are saying their nodes won't transmit and it may be that when the signal, the, the channel's in use, then they, they won't transmit and they'll try again. I, well, I see that in the uh, serial output, <clears throat> so I'm going to look at it again. I've got a um, cable to attach the node by the USB port to a mobile phone, so you can use a serial terminal app on the mobile phone. I'll show you that later, and you can see all the diagnostics and see what's happening. So um, then I was thinking for general receive I want to receive over a wider bandwidth sometimes, so I'm going to make a, a disc cone antenna to come on here, which I've never made before, which is a wideband antenna which is not tuned, and the SWR should be okay-ish, but over a much wider frequency range. And again, there's um, calculators on websites for making that, so there'll be a future video coming up in the next few days. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below, and suggestions for more videos you'd like to see. One person asked me if I could put the transmitter this end and the receiver down the corridor. Um, and that would mean a lot more walking backwards and forwards. So my answer is the theorem of reciprocity says that the path loss will be the same in both directions. And so the received results should be the same. doesn't matter which way the, uh, the signal's flowing. As long as the transmitter hasn't reduced its output power due to a bad SWR antenna, which could happen with some radios, but I think the... Uh, Meshtastic nodes I've seen don't have any SWR protection in them, which is why you have to make sure the antenna's plugged in before you switch it on. So um, I don't think that the transmit power would change, which means that the, the, the path length, length I think budget should always stay the same. Anyway, thank you for watching. Watch out for the next video, and uh, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye-bye.